Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, you'll have seen a post where I have bought this odd staff. You might be wondering what am I what am I actually doing with this? Well, I had a um, I had a crazy idea. I was getting bored of playing. I guess I don't want to play meta builds because I don't find them fun. Everybody's played Toxic Rain Champion, and it's it's done and dusted. And to be honest with you, if I put a video like that on this channel. Everyone will just be bored and it's nothing new and exciting and uh, and I get bored with playing shit like that So I was like, all right, let's have a look and see what we can do So I found this awesome stuff and I was like, I wonder like if I buy this which I did I've shelled out 99 chaos for this um, In fact, I'll even show you that I've done this and as you can see I've got a new character here, too uh, blah, 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 blah. So we got the staff, okay? And you'll notice up here Smite Zerka. So I was looking on uh, Path of Building and um, or POE Ninja, sorry. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's something that a similar tree that somebody's played that looks cool that, you know, would be really cool to sort of retrofit. And I came across this crazy motherfucker who played uh, Glacial Hammer and got it up to like 23 million DPS. Go away. Um, so I was like, okay. Well, if you can do that with Glacial Hammer on a Zerka, I wonder if I can sort of take that concept and apply it in, I guess, my own way. And that's basically what I've done. So, I've taken this tree and I've stripped it down to brass taxes. Um, now, there's some really interesting shit going on. Um, and I'll put a link in the description to this tree. This is like the craziest thing I've ever seen using Glacial Hammer and it gets so much DPS. Um, you know, obviously though, the investment is like mirror tier gloves, helmets not too bad, um, boots are mirror tier, um, and a feral's fur. Uh, rings are expensive, but, you know, not unobtainable, and we'll talk about that shortly. Amulet's expensive, but, you know, not unobtainable. And the staff is actually pretty straightforward to get, it's, uh, it's probably a few exalt. So I was like, alright, cool, let's, uh, let, let's, let's see what we can do with this, so... Move that tree out, move Jorgen's tree in. So, first off the cuff, this is a Smite Zerka. So, we're actually going to use Smite. And now I've been leveling up with Smite for the last, like, hour. Not even that. And i got to say, it's really fucking powerful. And it's actually really satisfying to play. Now, obviously, I've played Molten Strike Jug. And I've learnt a lot about how to kit out a Strike, uh, strike Build... So, strike builds are in for me. As far as I'm concerned, they are fucking awesome and they're fun as hell. And you don't need Ancestral Call to play them. Um, because of how the new trees kitted out, you can play them without ever having to do anything like that. Um, so, basically, um, yeah, that's where we're at. So, I've taken the tree that was on the Glacial Hammer build. I've stripped it right down. Like, ripped out all the items that made it expensive and unobtainable. I've left in the large clusters because they're like 90 chaos, maybe 150 chaos each, which isn't too bad. You know, we got to have some investment to target in, and we're in like mid, uh, we're moving into like past the first month of league, so we've got to get really interesting. A um, couple of things here, there's a few mechanics in this build that are really interesting um, that I can't wait to flesh out and play. Um, and also, this is Shaper and Guardian DPS. I'll let you have a look at these settings here. Um, we will be using Frenzy Charges and Generating Power Charges with Staff Builds, so that's pretty easily obtainable. We do have 70 Rage, and I'll talk about that shortly. Um, Blood Stance, nothing else crazy. We're going to be shocking enemies, um, so that's a thing. Um, ignition of enemies means nothing. Bleeding of enemies means nothing. We're going to have Curse, and I'll explain that very shortly as well. And, you know, if I so choose, we'll have Consecrated Ground, but no effect. We're basically, really raw tree. Um, and the only items I've got is the staff. I crafted the staff in part of the building that I've bought, so it's not an unrealistic, crazy-ass item. Um, and then we're going to be using Lion's Roar, Vessel of Vinkta, which I haven't seen and I haven't used in a build in a long time, actually works fucking amazingly for this build, perfectly for this build, in fact. Um... Diamond, a, a diamond flask, we're going to do this a little differently though. We're going to make this flask have a tax speed. That's going to give us a lot more oomph for our dollar. Um, 
obviously a, um, a, a life flask. Um, and then we're actually going to be running Rot Blood, which I found really interesting in this build. And this is a one chaos ring, by the way. I've already bought this. So in my little stash of mysteries, I've already bought Rot Gut. Or Rot Blood, sorry. Where you're going to be using a Rot Gut as well to generate Frenzy Charges. We'll talk about that when we get into building the build. Similar to my flasking video, we're basically going to craft this uh, so that it's an auto-generating flask. And because this is a crit-based build, we're going to generate a lot of flask charges constantly and have this auto-trigger when the flask gets full. So we're going to have sustainable Frenzy Charges without having to muck around with trying to get a Farrell's Fur, because we're not going to do Farrell's Fur on this build, at least straight up. We're going to make this cheap and just run straight up base armor and things like that that are obtainable for the everyday player. So, Rot Blood, what does it do? So, in this case, we're going to socket gems, uh, socketed gems in the ring get level 20 Blasphemy, which is where it turns a um, Hex or a Curse into an Aura. Pretty simple stuff. Um, so, Curse Auras uh, will also affect you. Uh, in this case, it won't, and we'll talk about the reason why it won't affect um, the Zerka, and this is linked to Rage. Um, so Socketed Curse Gems have increased reservation efficiency, so again, this is a really good stat. This means that, you know, 80% efficiency is going to result in almost no um, res reservation of this skill. 20% um, reduced effect of curses on you, so you're not really affected by curses, which is good. And then any enemies that you curse, um, you can inflict 18% increased damage. Really underrated ring, actually. I know we always go for crafted rings, but some of these uniques in the game are actually really good. And I didn't realize this until I looked at this Glacial, um, Glacial Hammer build. This is a really good ring, and I would actually use this in quite a number of builds, in particular Zerka builds, because it's powerful. It just doesn't give you life or resistances, um, which is what we normally look for when we craft rings. But we can get around that in other ways with this build. So the reason why temporal chains, in this case we're going to be using temporal chains in this, won't affect the Zerka is because of Chains of Emancipation. Which is a, I think actually this is a 1 Chaos Belt and Rot Blood is a 3 Chaos Ring. So Chains of Emancipation. Enemy hits inflict temporal chains on you. Okay. Cool. When you lose temporal chains, you gain maximum rage. So you sit at maximum rage. However, you're immune to curses while you have at least 25 rage. We're going to generate 70 rage on this build, and we're a Zerka, which means we're going to be a rage-based build. So we're almost always going to be at 25 rage, which means we're completely immune to curses, and we're immune to temporal chains. So between the effects of the ring and also the, um, the effects of the Chains of Emancipation, it completely flatlines the ability for Temporal Chains to have any effect on the Zerka because it's a, the Zerka generates Rage. So pretty much free awesome stats with no ramifications whatsoever is the name of the game here. Um, and then on top of that, we're going to be generating our fla uh, generating our you know, frenzy charges. We do have uh, one additional strike gloves, which were f the old gloves from my um, from my jug, uh, my delve jug. So we're just going to repurpose this and use them. Otherwise, you know, I'm not going to offload them or anything like that. So let's use the gear that we that I got. Um, and then basically, we're going to be stacking a lot of chaos resist on this build through gearing and and through the tree and whatnot as well. Uh, we're just going to go with a crown of uh, crown of the inward eye for now. Um, just a really good helm, a lot of armor, a lot of increased life, um, a lot of mana increase, just solid across the board. And we're going to respect this ring into a life on hit ring, which is going to give me that additional life on hit for when I smite all the enemies around me. So, and then obviously uh, uh, just a solid six link chest, which will go two blue and four red. And I'll talk about the gemming shortly. So basically, oh, I'm just trying to get my train of thought here. Uh, if we have a look at this. So basically, as an overall, that, that's fundamentally the, the skill sort of uh, rig up here. And then when we look at strike skills, we go attack mastery. Um, strike skills attack, um, which attack additional enemies, do so from 30% uh, increased distance. Now, to get additional strike on hit, we're going to be we're going to have to get tribal fury, 
and I'm simply just going to anoint that onto my amulet when I figure out what type of amulet. And I'm thinking the Choir of Storms for the amulet, but I'm not yet over that point. This is still putting the build together, and this is like just an early progress video of my, I guess, my thinking around how this build's going to work. Um, a couple of other things throughout the tree. So, you know, Art of the Gladiator, we're taking that Master of the Arena, Attack Speed. Um, we're taking Versatility. There's nothing really special here. We're taking the strike nodes, so two um, melee strike range, um, butchery, just increase attack speed. We are going to be taking berserking, which is how we're getting our rage up. So we're going to get an additional 10 rage from this as well. Um, and then I'm just going to double check. I don't think Chains of Emancipation gives you rage. No, it doesn't. Um, so it might only be 60 rage. I just need to figure that out. I'll have to do some crunching on that one. Um, and then basically we're just going to follow up and, uh, and come through here, uh, run disemboweling nodes. We'll probably change this um, a little bit and have increased crit strike against enemies that are on full health. Um, and then this is a really standard sort of stave build. So then we're going to take staff nodes up here to increase crit. Um, we're going to take Holy Dominion, Divine Fervor and Discipline and Training, get a lot more health where we can. Now, I did make a change up here and I went Divine Judgment because it's just a lot of elemental damage and it's a wasted node if you don't take it. Um, and Elemental Mastery, so exposure that you inflict. So we're going to be running a Wave of Conviction in this somewhere and probably a Wave of Conviction when we're hit. Um, but I'll figure that out when I get a bit further because I'll need to rejig a lot of the gem setups in this build because it's sort of set up to synergize with, um, with Glacial Hammer. It's not set up yet to do what I want it to do. Now we are going to be running Berserk as well um, because we're obviously a Zerker. So Berserk is going to give us a significant amount of damage, which is where this damage sort of tops off. Everyone always goes, oh, how come you've got you know so much? Uh, yeah, how come you're running Berserk? It's a Zerker. That's how it works. Um, and we will set that as, as, a, as a skill that I'll self-cast as well. Um, then we come up, we're going to pick up Sovereignty, obviously Reservation Reduction nodes in here. Uh, purity of flesh, um, life mastery, just getting more life. Uh, these blunt trauma and one with the river nodes. This is just amping up. It staves scale really well with elemental damage. Um, we have another another cluster jewel here, large cluster here, and then basically the serpent stance. And this is just crit multi and crit. We get to about 492% crit multi and about 60% crit chance, but we can get that further with better flasking and better gearing. And obviously I have ripped everything out of this build. So there is so much um, flexibility, like just the base damage we have, including Berserkers, 2.6 million with just the staff, rot blood, chains of emancipation, and four basic flasks that are pretty easily obtain obtainable. And obviously the cluster jewels, this build can really scale in damage in all different ways and survivability. Like even at this point, we have you know 3,650 health and we haven't even got health anywhere else in this build. So there's a lot of ways that I'm gonna spec this build up and change it and make it really cool and tanky and everything else in between. Um, but it's early days. Uh, so skill setups, pretty much we're gonna be running Wrath, Defiance, Banner, Precision, um, and then obviously we're going to have our aura, our blasphemy, um, temporal chains. So that's all going to be a reservation that we're going to be running for that. Um, and also blood and sand. We're going to be running uh, blood rage and molten shell, but we'll set that on a, a, a cast some damage taken. And then obviously berserk. Uh, we'll run ancestral protector. I don't run hydrosphere. I don't see a need for it. So I'm not going to be running hydrosphere. I might change my decision depending on how damage goes because hydrosphere is pretty cool. Um, Leap Slam, yep, we're going to run Leap Slam, uh, no Immortal Call, you don't need Immortal Call if you're running Molten Shell, it's stupid to do that, you can only have one guard skill up at once, so we're going to change that, and Smite, so we're going to take Smite, Multi Strike, and this had Awaken Jewels in it before, I've taken Awaken Jewels out, you know, imagine the damage you can get if you got Awaken Jewels at this point, it's 2.6 Awaken Jewels, take it up to 3, 3.08 mil, and then basically this build can easily get to five, six million DPS on hit and also area effects at 2.3 mil DPS. So this is a very good build. Like that's, as it stands right now, it, it is strong. It scales without 
any real intervention at this stage. Unless there's something in this tree I don't know about, but I'm pretty confident that it should be okay. Um, so we're going to be running Smite, Multi Strike, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Ruthless, because we're going to be attacking at 8.78, and we'll get that up to about 10 or 12% with um, uh, jewels at this stage and better itemization. Um, and then we're taking uh, lightning, lightning Penetration, which we can probably get Awakened Lightning Penetration. So if I was to get... Uh, yeah, that would take me up to 2.7 uh, 2 mil if we went that route, but we're not going to do Awakened Jewels as it's unrealistic for the everyday player. Um, and then Increase Critical Strike damage multiplier so this is going to get our crit up to that 492 percent mark which is just going to be disgusting um, considering we're going to be critting everything on the screen um, now we don't need to have ancestral call because we're going to be taking tribal fury and pretty much that's going to cater for our, our additional strike to damage uh strike to enemies um yeah so that's pretty much as complicated as the build gets um yeah. Anyway, um, so this is going to be my project for the next week. I am continuing the Delve build. I'm not going to do a... I might do a build update on my um, my other Zerker, which is my General's Cry. I've already done a build for that, but I might do another build guide for that. I'll probably do a build guide for my uh, Molten Strike Jug because we're pushing down to 400 plus Delve now. So that's pretty solid sort of midpoint to hit. Um, and it's respectable. Now, it does struggle with bossing. It's not made for bossing, it's made for pushing Delve. This is a character that's probably more conducive to bossing. Um, but yeah, there'll be pro more progress videos for this one. This is just a really cool build. I wanted to sort of do a video on it and talk my way through it. Um, and that also helps me consolidate my logic around the build. I'll put the POB in the description. I'll put the Glacial Hammer POB in the description because I think it's really cool. Um, and yeah, anyway, until next time, have a good one and uh, bye.